We're back. We're back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's uh, Halloween. So I thought I'd treat everybody and put Dave on. Happy <laughs> Halloween. We've got red faces. It's not makeup. There's a car in front and he's sat with his brake. I hate people that sit here with a foot on brakes. Right annoys me. So, uh, anyway, we're out. We've just been up to Grenoside. Uh, bring some loved ones into care. Some loved ones' ashes into our care. Uh, and it's a horrible day, isn't it, Dave? It is, yeah. Wait. Wet and foggy, and uh, God, it's been manically busy this week. We had so many funerals, we're pretty quiet with funerals at the moment. Uh, you know, normally your undertakers say that when you speak to undertakers, they always say, Oh, we're right busy. But I don't know, we're, we're not at the minute, we're quiet. So, got about, I don't know. 10, 12, something like yeah. that, in that region. Dave knows more than me. So, yeah, it's been quiet. It's quiet. So, while we've been quiet, we've been up to other things, haven't we, Davey? Yeah, yeah. We've been busy. Kept us then going. Tidy Memorial Garden up and stuff like that. Anyway, hang on a minute. Just make sure we're still on, that's all. Oh, it's got a full batch on here. So, we're heading back to our place now. Uh, what you got to do then, Dave? Well, I'm gonna have some bit of dinner. Because I can't add out, yeah, it's been over this morning. It's six minutes past two, by the way, <coughs> on Halloween, and he hasn't had his dinner. How did we know that we're coming? Yeah, well, we have to feed. I might have an hour because I'm tired. I think that's got something to do with our diabetes. I'm always tired, me. Always. I could sleep all day, couldn't I, Dave? You could, yeah. Seriously. And I'm right fortunate because we've got a set here at our place, so uh, it's not uncommon to walk in and see me fast asleep on set here with Sid Dog. So, I mean, our Sid's always tired and all, isn't it? He always has an hour. Yeah. If I lay on city, he comes and gets on. I'm going to put him for another city, I think. Well, Dad's got a city downstairs. Dad's got that blue Chesterfield oh, suite. yeah, but I haven't got time to lay on it. Oh, well, now, so it's not now. So, it's bloody absolutely vile. It is absolutely horrible today. It's like a November day near Bumfire Nee. Anyway, it's all Halloween, all Hallows Eve or whatever they call it today. I'm going off route, I'm going this way because it's horrendous down at Hillsborough. Not just because it's Wednesday ground, I don't, we're not talking about that. I've got to be careful about saying about Wednesday ground because uh, it breaks my heart to say this, but my grandson Jacob, who's nine, is a uh, a big Wednesday fan. It is. Uh, um, and it's upset the whole family. Oh, it's, it, honestly, it's cut through me like a knife, honestly. I was joking with him the other day and I says, what team is I support anyway? Wednesday, Grandad, you should know. I says, no, that should be United, Jake. No. Not supporting them, Grandad. I'm Wednesday blue all through. And then he dropped a eight bombshell on me. He says, when it's mine, Grandad, lads aren't going out with red ties on. They'll go out with blue ties on. So, anyway, the future. Glad I'm not going to be part of it. Sod that. He's a Wednesday I and all David Emmingham. Well, he's, he's more works up town. He's works up town mad. Yeah. 
But when we're talking about proper football teams, you know, like it's Wednesday, aren't they? Yeah. You know, them with grounds and that. We've got a ground. Who has? so. Yeah, but it's not yours, is it? It is. I thought it was your Palladium Park. No. Sunday no. League. No, we do it well. They're playing tonight. Ah, they're playing tonight? And he's going away. Is it Saturday? Saturday Stockport, yeah. Stockport on Saturday, Messer Emingham, with his football team. There's only three of them going like, but. No, there's a lot. They've just released a lot more tickets. So. Sure, up we there. They have, yeah. They gave them 40 tickets. <laughs> They've got 38 <laughs> left. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? No, no, they, they keep selling. They, they do right well, actually. Right well. My other grandson, our Ethan, and we never really talk about grandkids much because sadly you get trolls and they leave and attack kids. That's how sad, pathetic trolls are. So we don't actually mention, but our Ethan's into ice hockey and it, it was devastating for ice hockey, obviously last week when that lad sadly passed away uh, absolutely terrible my heart goes out to everybody in that uh, because it's like a family ice hockey it's like a big family uh, Sheffield Steelers and all that so my heart goes out to you all I'm not right into hockey and football and that really I'm a Dave no don't bother me I say I support United I don't ever go to a match or out like that. I don't believe that they should get paid that amount of money. You know, so it's just, and they sell all that merchandise for extortionate rates. So I just it just annoys me sometimes. If people's struggling to live, uh, and it's a working class sport, isn't it? It's like fishing and all that, but it's ridiculously expensive now. One thing I am going to talk about is a sister dying. I put a post on Facebook today with it. People have to go to other countries to when they've got end of life and, and all this and to basically finish your life humanely, let's call it. As we would with a pet, an animal or a dog or anything. We don't want to see his pets suffering and we don't want to see loved ones suffering. I watched my father in Northern General Hospital at this old lady cross. Come on, babe. You toss her. You could have waited for her. Uh, I watched that old bloke, my father, and he got cancer. And I'm telling you, for the last week of his life, it was horrendous. I genuinely wanted to put pillar over his ear and just put him out of his misery because he was unconscious all the time. He hardly knew him, but when he did wake up, he was in pain and he was suffering. Uh, and you've been through it, Dave, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, we have to watch his loved ones in absolute agony at end of life. And I honestly think that we should have a system in place where people say if my quality of life becomes so poor then I want to have my family round in my own home I want doctor to come out I mean that's going to be an eye on impossibility because my doctor Dr Afsol at Duke Medical Centre on Duke Street he'd come out he's a right nice bloke my doctor my doctor Dr Afsol and his son who was on reception I don't know his son's name, but he looks just like him. The two are nicest people you could wish to meet. They genuinely are. Uh, that's Duke Medical Center on Duke Street. Brilliant doctors. And I think if I were at end of life, my doctor would come out. Uh, well, he'd definitely come out. He'd like to see back of me, I think, Dr. Afsal. Uh, die one with me. But I think that Yesterday I watched news, did I see it where them with three legs, that uh, Isle of Man thing got like three legs on his thing, hadn't they? Them. Uh, Alright, you're not talking about Ralph Harris, are you? 
Oh, man, oh, he's Jake the Pike. Oh, we won't mention him. Bleed, you know. I used to like him when I was a kid. Do you know what it is yet? Yeah. We do now, you dirty old bastard. Uh, anyway, no, we're not on about Rolf Harris. Went to, went to see him uh, when they opened Chief Valley Baths up when I was a kid and they were doing a painting. Uh, and all kids could go up and sit on his knee. Now we know why. I didn't go and sit on his knee, by the way. Uh, I just went for buns and biscuits and stuff like that. But, like I say, I love man. And now having this thing on where they're going to introduce, hopefully, a sister dying. And it's a serious thing. And I just hope that British government, our government, English government, grow some balls and say, we need to look at this. We had Brexit, didn't we? And people were, could vote. Do you want to stay in? Do you want to go out? And we voted to leave. Yeah, it's knackered a lot of things up. Like, you can't get workers now, because obviously not many British want to actually... You don't want to do certain jobs like picking veg and all that. It's below them, they think. There's all these unemployed, yet they can't get workers to go in fields and pick veg. Or serving restaurants they don't want to do that i don't want to do that i want to be a i want to be famous everybody wants to be famous today don't they? have you noticed uh, so footballers or youtube stars like this well we're not stars are we dave well i think well we are really in a way but we haven't got many it's about four one thousand four hundred actually subscribed so it's not a lot no, but it's more than some. Well, uh, it's more than some. 50,000 followers on Facebook. Mm. That's how many people follow Michael Fogg Funeral Directors on Facebook. 50,000. That's crazy, isn't it? It's mad. So we dominate it, don't we? Yeah. Really, Facebook's mad. And we have some lovely people following us and commenting and all that. I think government should put this thing out there where they say, right, we're going to put it to vote. Because it's got nothing to do with doctors, this, and it's got nothing to do with politicians. It's, it's our loved ones who we're having to watch suffer and die, and it should be our choice. So I think they should say, right, we're going to have a vote. If you your quality of life becomes non-existent, you're in pain and you're suffering. Do you want to have your family around and have some music playing? Uh, and basically, have a tablet and go to sleep peacefully. Laid in your own bed, looking out at your own garden. Because that's how life should end. Not in an hospital where you're pumped full of morphine and everything else. We don't do that with animals, so we shouldn't do it with humans. People's going to say, he's an undertaker, he's bound to want a sister dying. Load of rubbish. I'm not saying give everybody when they get to 75, 80, an injection. I think if you're 85, 90, 95, and you've got your faculties and you're in good health, let's say, and you can get a bar and you're a bit independent, fine but if you get to 73 and you're terminally ill with cancer and you're in absolute I hugged my father a couple of days before he died never touched my father all my life when my father weren't an ugly person he'd, he'd shake your hand but that'd be it uh, but before he died he was set up and I like, hugged him and he like he didn't scream at it, but he, he like, you could tell he was uncomfortable and he went, oh watch, be careful, be careful. And I realised how gently we were at that point. Come on, get out. You're getting out. Come on, dipstick. You can stay there then. Stay there. Let this van out. 
nice to be nice, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, I mean, we had to watch him suffering, and he did suffer, our old bloke. He genuinely, it were horrendous, it were heartbreaking. I wanted to put a pillar over his head while he was asleep and just end it for him. I know that sounds horrible, doesn't it? It sounds terrible. He actually said to me, can't you give me no meat? And I says, father, they can't, can they? They'd get prosecuted. And I don't think they should get prosecuted. I think it should be done properly. So, luckily now, Isle of Man, them with three funny legs, not Rolf Harris, is uh, going to start it off. Now, you can't go to Isle of Man on holiday and have it. It's for Islanders only. That's how they're going to do it, which is, that's how it should be. You know, they don't want an influx of uh, holiday makers going and then having to ferry them back in coffins to the mainland. We should have it as sent here anyway. We don't want to be going all here to die. I don't know, nobody on Isle of Man. We don't want to go here far to die. I want to die in in my own home. I wouldn't mind dying up in North York, she knows I'm fine. Right. Looking yeah. out and somewhere. I wouldn't mind dying up here, that'd be alright. I could put up with that. So that's my view on it. I know your views might be a lot different to what my views are, but I meet that many families when I'm doing arrangements with families and we sat chatting and it genuinely is really difficult to hear a family telling you about the last few weeks, last few days, last few hours with a loved one. It's horrendous, it really is heartbreaking. And I honestly think there's no good way to die. But if we can make that passing more bearable, more comfortable, and more humane, then for God's sake, it's 2013, is it? No, it's 2023. I always get mixed up with these date things. I say it's 2013, and then sometimes I'll say it's 1993. I'm not really good with dates, I'm a Dave. Dates and keys, I'm terrible with. But I'm like with keys, Dave. Oh, don't start in with keys. I lose keys all the time. If forever have having keys cut, I'm a nightmare with them. Uh, but that's my view on it. We should bring a sister dying in. Providing that it's done properly and the done properly and obviously doctors do it properly so just coming up Bernard Road now past Bin Place anybody who don't know where we are and I'd like to thank you all for following us on Facebook I know it's our channels not like other channels I watch other channels on YouTube I love them I like uh, DJ Audis he's very good I love him he's brilliant and he'll go to a factory and like I'm taking some shots you can't film this well you can if you don't fuck bath people don't get well like, you're invading my privacy well no not if you're on a public footpath you're not and he'll take drone up to fly around you can't fly a drone or this firm why you don't own air so he might come to us one day DJ Audits if we ask him to I don't mind yeah, he can film what he wants yeah I think all Undertakers should invite him in the film, definitely. Yeah. I've never heard of him. I know what. No. DJ Audis is. Don't hear him, he's brilliant. Right good. So. Getting him a right club there, aren't I? You are. Uh, I'll, I'll watch his stuff for ages, I, I love it. And I notice other film dates always look right smart, don't they? They always look sat there behind a nice desk. And I'm not talking about people in the film industry. 
I'm not talking about arrangers or conductors, I'm talking about the funeral directors, that's the man who owns the actual company. Oak Restaurant, working industry, they don't own a funeral home, they're not funeral directors. But a lot of people set a page up and say, I'm a funeral director. Well, no, you're not. You actually work for a funeral director. That's it. Uh, but they all look right smart and they sat here and they're talking about prepayment funeral plans and showing you different coffins. And we don't do that, do we? We don't, no. We, we don't so come on here to sell stuff. No. So it means means work for us basically, doesn't it? Well, I think it's horrible. Who wants it pushing down the throat? Said vicar to actress. You don't want people trying to flog your coffins and that. I don't think nobody should have coffins. What they used to do in Victorian days is local churches, parishes, had what they call the community coffin. And a lot of people couldn't afford their own coffin. Didn't have money for a coffin. What they'd do is, a father would have his daughter's teeth to car. So husband didn't have bills from dentist. Before she got married, a woman were more likely to find an husband if she got no teeth. Because they didn't have no worry about the done or that. I didn't know. True. That's right. And same with coffins. People didn't have money for a coffin. They used to buy a coffin, even for wedding presents and stuff, and they'd have it under bed with blankets and that in until it were needed. But a lot of people just couldn't afford it, so local parishes would have community coffins. And local undertaker would go to a house and put a person in it. And then when they get to the cemetery, because they were all burials then, not cremations, they'd take the person who were wrapped in Essien, take him out of the coffin and just bury the person. They'd take coffin back and reuse it again. So I think that's a good idea. We should do it today. People shouldn't have to spend a fortune on coffins. I mean, Steve Saltz, our coffin manufacturers, weren't very happy about me saying that. Lee Jeffries, their salesman, will go mad. He said, no, I didn't make what I'm doing. We don't want that. We want them to buy good coffins, quality coffins, engraved coffins. We want them to buy artisan coffins. We want them to spend a fortune on the coffins. That's where we earn us money. And I get that. Never mind that. I want my biscuits from their deliveries. Well, I, every time they come, Dave gets a packet of biscuits. But people having to pay for all that, I don't know. They could put me in, in one of them coffins, a community coffin, won't bother me. And then take me, and if I'm going to be cremated, they could take me out of that, put me on a sheet of wood, because you need something to put into a cremator, you can't just push a body in. So they could actually unclip it and bottom bit comes off, you just replace bottom. That's how it should be, I think. Rest of it shall be, it bring away. That made more sense. I'm all for saving money. Not doing it on cheap, I don't believe in that. Do it cheap, do it twice. Do it right, that's what I'm saying. But not many people mention coffins, do they, after a service, Dave? No. They don't say, oh, that coffin your George were in were lovely. What were them handles called on that coffin? Weren't they lovely them? Nobody mentions coffin handles. You can't even pick most coffins up with handles, they'll come off. It was little thin pins and little thin screws. Because they're just for sure. So it's all a con, all lottery. You got Oscars. They're nice, great big ones, Oscars. Fleurs. What do we use? Fleurs mainly, isn't it? Mainly. mainly we use fleur handle, it's nice. 
not in plastic, what everybody uses. But nobody ever says after. Oh, I did like the mandals on your Terry's coffin. Oh, weren't they lovely? I'd like them in my kitchen. Yeah, they are the coffin handles. Don't spend a fortune on them. If you were to say a week after funeral to somebody, what were handles like on your Gary's coffin? <laughs>